Hello and thanks for watching. So what's so special about Manchester that it gets its own video? Well, nothing really. It's just that on this occasion Manchester was very busy. There were lots of controllers including a ground controller which is the main focus of the video. I was in a, a group VFR flight there was lots of um, noise on the radio. I was in a group team speak room with lots of chatter. So I'm not going to play back any audio in this. I didn't ask any of the controllers for permission. So it's just going to be a text transcript basically of the conversations that we had. The flight is from Manchester down to Welshpool. So the main focus of this will be getting the clearance and the departure from Manchester and leaving the zone. I did the usual preparation. I got my charts for Manchester, got the charts that show the VRPs and the entry and exit lanes and also the control zone. Uh, I spawned here at Tayton Light Aircraft Parking, a little bit of a disused taxiway. And initially the ATIS was that runway 23 right was in use. So I was expecting that I'd be uh, sent along Kilo and then to either Papa or along to Foxtrot and to hold there. Because there's a ground controller on, uh, it could be that he sort out the clearance, departure clearance, and gives it to you, or it could be that he tells you that you'll receive your departure at the hold. Um, actually, what happened in this case was that the ground controller gave it to us. Uh, before we got into position at the hold, there was a change of runway in use at 23 left. So that meant that I was expecting we would again go along Kilo down to Papa then hold there get transferred to the tower controller to get permission to cross the runway here and then to hold at Tango 1 and then when he's ready give us permission to line up and depart as usual. So you can see how it's crucially important to have your charts there ready and to have thought about the routes that you're likely to be given to get to a particular place. I called in as usual for the engine start, told him where I was and immediately he told me that he would get back to me with my clearance. So that made things easier, I knew what to expect. No flight would be complete without a mistake, of course, and forgetting to file a flight plan was a great way to start. The ground controller then came back to give me my departure clearance. Um, he was quite informal. Um, it varies quite a lot, doesn't it, on VATSIM as to how people speak. Uh, he gave a departure via the Thel Wall Viaduct VRP um, which caused a little bit of confusion but I made a note of that. So he told us to leave via the Thel Wall Viaduct VRP which is over here. Um, which wasn't what we were expecting to be honest, so here's Manchester and you can see here that departures south and east are over to this lane and then down to Macclesfield south. So even though we wanted to go southwest, I assumed that we would have to go that way. I did call in again just to double check that and to confirm, uh, but I guess, you know, on the day it's up to Tower if they think that's um, a safe way to, for you to leave and it fits in with their other traffic, then why not? There then followed a hasty bit of reconsidering while we looked at the charts for the other VRP that we weren't expecting. 
and then I call in for taxi and I'm told to taxi to holding point Papa One via Bravo and Papa and this is where I expect to be handed off to Tower and then I had a bit of an issue at Papa One so I'm sitting there and he hasn't told me to contact Tower all the other GA pilots had been given that instruction as part of their taxi instructions but I hadn't so I had no choice but to ring him up and ask for frequency change and think he was a bit annoyed felt that I'd missed an instruction but there we are what can you do When I spoke to Tower I wasn't given a particular onward holding point so I just uh, continued over 2-3 right to hold at Tango 1 so basically holding short of the active runway. Tower saw me arrive and gave me instructions to line up without me having to call into them at all. As usual, if you're told to contact someone, you don't need to give your full details, they're already expecting you. Before I called in, Radar contacted me to ask if I was on frequency and asked me if I could see some traffic. and. 9 times out of 10 in the simulator I can't, it's really difficult to see. In the real world of course your peripheral vision picks up stuff and it's much easier but in the simulator unless they've got their lights shining at you I can rarely see other traffic. When I get to the viaduct the approach controller uh, tells me that the service is terminated because I'm now leaving the control zone and I'm just about to enter the low level corridor and that maybe that's why I wasn't given specific instructions about a frequency change being approved or to monitor Unicom because in the low level corridor uh, you can read about this on the VATSIM Manchester web page or on the NATS website um, they suggest that you monitor the Manchester approach control frequency so you're listening to what they're saying and also um, it's suggested on the NATS website uh, that you use the frequency monitoring code or listening squawk for Manchester approach and that's what I did so by setting that squawk it tells Manchester Approach that you are listening to them even though you're not talking to them. And then we just exit out the bottom of the low level corridor, skirt underneath the bit of controlled airspace below it and just head off to our destination with nothing else remarkable happening. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.